Bill, you couldn't even get a seat. I, uh, I'm glad you did. We got a, uh, I, I noticed such a thing and, uh, many cameras and I see a, a number of, uh, Christmas ties, uh, as well. Fire away. <laughs> What's your Happy New Year. Year. Can you tell us uh, a bit more, in a bit more detail, about what you're going to be doing next year? If you're not going to be lobbying or consulting, how would you define your next job? Well, let me let me start by saying a few things, Ben. I, I it is, um, and you all know this because you uh, you do this as well, and that is, it is an honor and a privilege uh, to stand here to work inside this building, to serve your country, to work for. A president that I admire as much as President Barack Obama. I've been um, a member of his staff for uh, almost seven years, and uh, it's a, again, it's a it's a remarkable privilege. It is in many ways the opportunity of a lifetime, one that I will be uh, forever thankful and grateful for. Um, what I'm going to do next uh, is. Uh, step back a little bit, recharge some. Uh, we've been going at this pace for uh, at least four years. Um, I will have an opportunity, I hope, to give uh, some speeches. Uh, I will continue to provide uh, advice and counsel to, uh, to this building and to this president. And um, uh, I look forward to continuing to do that. In terms of advocacy for the president, are you looking forward to it? The potential freedom that will come from speaking for him and not being behind that podium. <laughs> no, I uh, no look. I, I you know we uh, look. We're in a we're in a we're in a very different political environment than we've been in a number of years in this country. And I think whoever stands here or whoever goes on television to make the case for this administration should be uh, should be an advocate for. The decisions and the policies that uh, uh, that are coming from this building, uh, you, you you certainly have to play that role. I, I'm not going in order to be freed up to say a series of things that I might not otherwise say. Um, I uh, I I've enjoyed every time I've come out here, and uh, even on days when you I, I miss Compton even every day, even when you wake up at four and pick up the paper and groan that you have a sense of what the first several questions might be. Um, but I think it, uh, it's important for uh, this country and for an administration to come out here and uh, advocate on behalf of and answer uh, on behalf of its policies and answer your questions. And you've talked about how long you've been next to uh, now President Obama. Can you talk about the impact uh, that you think your leading will have in concert with uh, David Axelrod and already Rahm Emanuel. I, I will say this. I, one of the things you learn very quickly as you walk into this building each day, uh, you are, you're struck by the sense that, um, that of the history of this place and you realize that whatever your length of service here, it is uh, temporary in the long and wonderful history of our country. Uh, and I think it does an administration good, and I think it will do this administration good to have um, to have people like David Pluff and others come into an administration who haven't been here, who uh, who have been able to watch a little bit from the outside. We all admit there's a, you have to admit there's a there's a bubble in here to some degree. Um, so I think having new voices and having fresh voices, some of those voices that are coming back from having taken a couple of years off are, are an important part of this process. I think they will serve the president well, uh, even as people like David Axrod and I go outside of the building and have a chance to talk to the president and people here with a slightly different perspective of of, uh, of not driving in here uh, each morning. So it's, uh, I think it's unique. I think it's, uh, but you know, the truth is you, you, you walk around here and you see the, the history and such, and I just reiterate again, you realize that for however long you're here, 
it's temporary. But what endures is um, what endures is our government. What endures is uh, the great experiment of democracy that's proved to be um, such a wonderful thing for the world. Just to follow, Gavin. Let me go. Let me go around. I'll, I have a feeling we'll be here for a little bit. Today. A couple yes, of questions. Sir. A couple of questions. One domestic and one um, international. Mm -hmm. um, the incoming Republican budget chief for the House, Paul Ryan, has, is saying that uh, he will demand spending concessions from the administration in exchange for an agreement, a willingness to lift the national debt ceiling. Would the administration be willing to consider such? Well, look, and I think we're going to have to have a discussion, and we are going to have a discussion about steps that are going to be taken to get our fiscal house in order. Uh, we have we made some extraordinary decisions over the past several years, uh, some in this administration, some in the previous administration, to deal with the financial calamity, to deal with the uh, tremendous downturn in our economy and the job loss that it's wrought. Uh, but we are not here, I think it's important to understand, we're not here because of a series of decisions that just got made in the last six months. We're dealing with, uh, we're, we're dealing with a series of decisions that date back quite a long time, that the bills have continually come due for, and we're going to have to address them. What the, ex what the exact specifics of those uh, look like, obviously that's part of the process that we're going to go through. But I, I hope that everybody approaches not just the exercise of fiscal responsibility and fiscal restraints here, see, but I, I think it's important, as you heard <coughs> Chairman Goolsby say this weekend, <coughs> it's important to approach our, uh, the upcoming vote, as you mentioned, on the debt limit in a way that's responsible uh, and in a way that uh, doesn't threaten the full faith and credit uh, of our government. The, uh, the president is obviously, obviously has a uh, president who's upcoming visit on his mind. He stopped in at a meeting with the Chinese foreign minister at the White House yesterday. Um, how hard is the president willing to push President Hu on uh, China's currency issue and on human rights when they meet? I, I think those two issues that you mentioned are, will be on the agenda and will be tremendously important. Um, those are issues that came up yesterday in the meeting, as you said, that the president stopped by. Um, China plays an enormously important role in our global economy, uh, and China has to take steps to rebalance its currency. Uh, and the president will, uh, will continue to make that point when President Hu is here, as he did with the foreign minister. Yeah. And I would say this, I, I, I would say that, you know, understand that human rights, the global economy and currency are certainly on the list. I, I won't go through all the topics, but of course, the situation in uh, North Korea, uh, I anticipate will also take up some amount of that time. But the president's yeah. going to accuse of soft peddling human rights uh, when it comes to China. Is he going to be I, maintaining I, that? I have, uh, he has... Uh, I don't. I think if you speak directly to the president of China about your concerns about their record on human rights, I don't think that's soft pedaling. You referenced uh, Austin Goolsbee's <coughs> yeah. comments about the debt ceiling. Debt ceiling. I wanted to, I wanted to read you this quote from a senator: "The fact that we're here today to debate raising America's debt limit is a, is a sign of leadership failure. Mm -hmm. Leadership means the buck stops here. Instead, Washington is shifting the burden of bad choices today onto the backs of our children and grandchildren. America has a debt problem." and a failure of leadership, Americans deserve better. I therefore intend to oppose the effort to increase America's debt limit. I su suspect you know who I'm quoting. <laughs> that is, uh, <laughs> that is Sen Obama Senator Barack Obama in 2006, 2006 voting yes. against uh, yes. raising the debt ceiling. Uh, and I think what is important is it's under understand that the raising the debt limit was not in question uh, in, the well, outcome, to 48, in the outcome of that vote. Close well, well, we've we've had closer. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, uh, I, I think it's important that the outcome, based on the outcome of that vote, uh, the as I mentioned, the full faith and credit was not in doubt. Full faith and credit of our uh, of our government and our economy was not in doubt, uh, and the president used it to make a point about needing to get serious about fiscal discipline, and. Uh, we, as I said earlier, are dealing with the legacy of decisions that have been made over the past many years, not paying for a prescription drug benefit, 
not paying for uh, uh, wars, not paying for uh, tax cuts that changed our fiscal situation much more markedly uh, than anything ever had. So I think it is up to, and it's important for Congress, because we know not to play politics with this, not to play games, to find a way to raise that debt limit, understanding that we have to, as I mentioned to Matt, we're going to have to take some serious steps to get our fiscal house in order. Um, but we understand, we, we know what happens. We know the, the catastrophic actions with things like Social Security and Medicare if you threaten uh, the solvency of the government. So he, so, he, so he only voted that way because he knew that it was going to pass. And, and I, th I think clearly he was sending a message. But he knew it was going to pass. That's why he voted against Again, that one. His vote was not uh, necessarily needed on that. So I guess then just extending that, it would be okay for other senators to do the same thing this year as long as they know that ultimately... There, it, there may be some that send a message, but I think what is important is that the ultimate bottom line is we shouldn't upset the notion of that full faith and credit. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't, as some have rhetorically done leading up to this, suggest that that's a good way to deal with this is simply to let, uh, to not pass that extension. We understand, as Austin said, and, and look, Austin is, uh, is a very bright economist. Uh, the, the, the effects of something like that, as he said last weekend, uh, would exceed anything that we saw uh, in the financial collapse in 2008. All right, and just a quick question about the assassination of the governor of Punjab in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could put the assassination in the context of the President's <coughs> AFPAC review, uh, whether you think it indicates anything about how successful efforts are to, to root out extremism. Uh, the governor was regarded as the best spokesman against extremism since uh, Benazir Bhutto. Comment on that. Uh, look, I think, um, first of all, I think it's important that we, uh, that our government uh, express our condolences. Um, as you mentioned, this is uh, an individual who had worked hard to promote tolerance, um, and his, uh, his loss is a great one for Pakistan. Uh, Secretary Clinton met with the Pakistani ambassador yesterday to personally uh, pass along the president's condolences. Um, I would simply say, Jake, that we remain committed to um, the efforts that the Pakistani government uh, is and must undertake uh, to root out violent extremism uh, and to bring uh, greater peace and stability uh, to that country and to that region of the world. Robert, are you going to be endorsing a successor in your job? I mean, are you <laughs> going to give the president uh, any advice and counsel on who you think I, you? Uh, generally don't speak publicly about the advice and the counsel that I give, and I shouldn't change that today. Where do you think he is on the chief of staff situation? Uh, is he leading in any direction in terms of, it's, it's been made clear by various Democrats that if Pete Rouse wants to stay, he can. Do, do you know where the president is, where Pete Rouse is? Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have uh, a lot new for you uh, than what I, I think was quoted as saying a couple of days ago. Uh, I expect that, um, the, I expect that a lot of, uh, a lot of personnel decisions will get wrapped up in the next few days because the president and the team uh, understand uh, how much work there is to be done this year, that our plate is full, uh, and that we have uh, many important issues that we have to address. And uh, uh, I will say I expect that uh, the president is likely uh, to make some uh, economic team personnel announcements uh, on Friday, uh, I will not get into who that might be, uh, but uh, I think on Friday we will travel uh, in the area, uh, visit a uh, window manufacturer that is that will take advantage of some of the expensing provisions that the president proposed uh, in the fall and were contained in the ultimate tax agreement, 100% uh, expensing uh, for the next year. Uh, of investments that are made, that they'll take advantage of that, and uh, he'll draw some attention to that as well as uh, uh, react to uh, uh, whatever the jobs numbers are. Yeah, so, yeah,
Is uh, Gene, Gene Sperling shopping for new windows right now? Or? I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I'm not going to get it. Real quick anymore. question on uh, uh, the Medicare regulation that administration officials this morning are saying the New York Times report is true, uh, that you're going to take out the references to end-of-life planning uh, that, are, that would have been covered in, in the health care reform law. My question is, it seems like you're dropping it in part because dating back to August of 2009, there have been these false allegations that there were going to be death penalties. And so why, it seems like you're giving those allegations credibility no, by backpedaling I, that. Why not fight for this? Well, I, I think what the administration believed was important was, and, and look, end-of-life counseling is, uh, is something that uh, I don't think is a partisan issue. I think people understand, uh, and we've, we have had great national debates about, uh, about these topics in the past few years. Um, it's an important part of... Uh, your a relationship with your doctor. Um, the uh, the proposed rule did not have these provisions uh, in there originally. We did not think it made sense, based on that, to necessarily include them in the final rule without having um, some discussion about that. And uh, uh, so those come out of this rule, but that doesn't change. I, I think bipartisan support for um, having an intelligent conversation with uh, with a medical professional about uh, about your choices uh, for end of life. Things that upsets liberals in the president's own party that he, he doesn't fight for these things sometimes? You give in on it? And, no, no, again, and we just, the, we did not think that the process uh, in the rule making uh, was, um, was what we wanted it to be in terms of having and giving the public an adequate uh, space in a public comment period to debate these kind of things. That does not change, uh, again, our support and uh, other support for, uh, uh, for these types of uh, confidential discussions. Jim, you, Robert, could you talk a little bit about your personal uh, things that went into your making this decision? I mean, obviously, you can make a ton of money giving speeches, and you've been on a government salary for a long time. There's also the issue of personal freedom. Maybe you're exhausted by this job, and maybe you're just sick and tired of us. Could you tell us uh, a little bit of what went into this decision? Maybe. Uh, maybe. I will. Uh, I will say. I, and I will say this. Look, I, I guys, I'm. Uh, I am not good at. Uh, I'm not good at talking about myself. Uh, maybe that's not a great trait to, to have if you live in Washington. But um, uh, look, obviously this was not an easy decision. But again, I, I think this is a very natural time period um, to to make the decision to to, to recharge a little bit. Um, you know, I I think a, a bunch of you guys in here covered. Uh, covered the campaign that went for a couple of years, and then we've had a couple of probably the busiest years uh, that Washington and a White House have seen in many decades. So yeah, it's look, there. You guys know this because, uh, again, because you guys cover this place. The, the the this doesn't stop. Only rarely does it observe holidays like uh, Christmas, <laughs> um, and sometimes not even that. And uh, you know, so there's a there's no, no there's no doubt there is a there is a this is a this is a tough place to work. Now again, it is an amazing privilege. I would not trade as I told my staff this morning. I would not trade the worst day I've had here for uh, many of the best days that you might have in another job. I think the last two years have been. Um, extraordinary to watch, extraordinary to be a part of. I, um, I work with uh, uh, a president that I uh, love and respect. Uh, I work with a group of people uh, who comprise my staff and comprise the White House staff that, um, that I've worked with uh, almost nonstop for many of them for four years. Some, uh, Tommy Vitor came here about, came to the Obama uh, uh, campaign for Senate a couple of months after I did, well before anybody had given any DNC speeches and uh, we were just running for the Senate in Illinois. So 
those are, I don't consider the people that I work for uh, just colleagues. I consider them uh, among the best friends that I have. Um, but it's time to take a little break. It's time to, there's a little boy who probably needs a, probably needs a, a ride to school every now and then. Here. Shifting <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, actually, I was uh, I was talking about Nick because the uh, the, uh, the the surfboard doesn't fit in my car. So, uh, <laughs> is, is that a tan? Or yeah, I was gonna say that is uh, that. My friends is not uh, is not a tan. He's tan, but that is. The re- those are the results of something uh, a little bit more embarrassing. Did I just mention? Are we on TV? I'm sure people will follow up on your situation. But, but if I could shift to healthcare sure. for a moment, obviously, I, I'm, I health, would much rather talk about healthcare you, than myself. So healthcare reform is going to be under assault, obviously, in the coming weeks and months. How active is the president going to be in defense? Is he going to let this happen on Capitol Hill? Or is he going to get out there? Are there any plans in the works for a major speech from the president defending health care reform? For, and are you reluctant to turn it into a political football like it was a year ago? No, because I think what's important, Chip, is to understand that, and you've seen this acknowledged, I think, by many uh, proponents of repeal, that this is symbolic. They understand that this is not going to land on the president's desk. Uh, it's not likely to pass uh, the Senate that this is uh, a bit of huff and puff. That's, this town does that great. Uh, funding and have a significant effect And, and, and that, those are important, but I, I think it's important, though, to take just a step back and understand beyond the symbolism what this means. What this means is going back to a health care system where insurance companies are in charge and call the shots, where... A child that is sick with a pre-existing condition doesn't have to get coverage in the greatest, strongest, most powerful country on the planet, where seniors don't get help with their prescription drug costs. Will the president make a major speech making these arguments? I think the president's position on it is fairly well known. I don't anticipate that. Uh, I, I think as the debate continues and as the implementation continues, which I think is the most important part of all this, as the implementation continues, you'll hear the president discuss this. It's not, um, obviously the president is focused very much on uh, the economy and in the job situation right now. Um, He's remarkably proud of the accomplishment of health care. We have now the tougher task of implementing and to ensure that what I talked about a second ago, I mean, we're, a family not having to worry about losing their insurance or having their insurance coverage capped by uh, the decisions made by an insurance company. Um, fear of skyrocketing premiums with no accountability. Um, as I said, fear of uh, discrimination on pre existing conditions. Um, I don't think that the American people want to go back to uh, a health care system where, uh, where those, those safety nets are in doubt, and that's what the law is. Yes, sir. Robert, just to follow up on two subjects already covered and one new one, on your end of your tenure as, as White House Press Secretary, President Obama has already said some kind things about what an effective advocate you were for his policies and administration. How would you grade your own performance? <laughs> uh, since I still have many more briefings to do before the end of the month, I will uh, I'll defer that question until the end of the class. Pull it out still. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I I don't do well talking about myself. And uh, uh, would, would there be anything you would wish that you had done differently? Oh, I think if you have any job and you say you don't wish you would have done something a little differently, you've probably not taken a good uh, necessarily a good look at. Of course, I mean I don't. There may be, look, there may be something, uh, there's probably something every day. Uh, look, and I, again, I, uh, I had, I have the opportunity to work for uh, and serve, work for this president, serve this country, work with uh, so many wonderful friends, and 
and be in the middle of what's going on. It's a it's a tremendous. It has been a tremendous honor. Would you would count yourself a success in what you did here? Um, yeah, I, I I think that we have been able to. And look, I I play a very small role in a big uh, a very big operation. So I, I think that's important to understand that. Uh, I think if you just look at what the president was able and the vice president were able to get accomplished at the end of the last uh, the end of last year a start treaty that will make real discernible uh, reductions in our deployed nuclear weapons repealing uh, a law that he believed and had believed for many years was unjust and repealing uh, don't ask don't tell uh, ensuring our economic recovery uh, with uh, by, by making sure that tax rates for middle class families didn't go up. Uh, all, all of those are uh, all of those are important things and might uh, in uh, in a slow year count for uh, or a slow two years count for uh, the entirety of what you were able to do. That was uh, that was just two weeks here. So. Um, two other things real quick. Uh, on the Medicare rule, mm -hmm. your explanation that the rule was revoked uh, because it didn't meet your preferred standards for the rulemaking process leaves open the possibility that you would seek to reintroduce it in a way that does uh, comport with your preferences for the rulemaking process. Yeah. Is it dead for good? I, I, would, I would, on the specifics for that, point you over to HHS. And lastly, um, getting to the question of how you expect to work with the House GOP majority. Mm -hmm. Um, Congressman Cummings appeared uh, on one of the Sunday morning talk shows saying that uh, he would be vigilant to look out for the uh, GOP majority, particularly on his committee, conducting witch hunts with subpoenas and that sort of thing. Uh, Congressman Issa appeared on three Sunday morning shows. He sent out a bunch of letters um, and made pretty plain his agenda as the chairman of that committee. Uh, I wonder, in everything you've heard from Daryl Issa so far, whether you think he is in, uh, engaged in witch hunts or whether you think um, he's going to conduct that committee in a way that you think you can productively work with him. I think in the, he and the vice president, I think, had a, 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 productive, uh, a productive meeting uh, at the end of last year. Uh, I think what is important is to understand that uh, everybody in government should, and certainly everybody here does, uh, want oversight that ensures that the intent of the law or the intent of the policy is being effectively carried out without waste or fraud. Uh, I think if you look at something the size and the scope of the Economic Recovery Act, uh, you get a sense of how the degree to which the degree of importance that we put on that here. Uh, at the same time, I don't think uh, we People want good oversight, but as you said, we don't, uh, I didn't mean to say you said, but as your question said, um, people are not interested in relitigating the, relitigating re everything in the past. We've got problems in the future that we need to focus on. So I, I think that we're happy to be a part of um, responsible oversight. And what do you think about what you've heard from him so far? Well, look, I, I uh, I think that Congress is uh, not even an hour and a half old. So, again, I, I think we uh, maybe he'll wait. He'll want to wait for me to grade him, uh, like I did myself. But again, I think the question is: that there's a standard for responsible oversight that doesn't exceed the type of uh, uh, partisan, ideological, political witch hunts that. Uh, people like Congressman Issa have spoken out against in the past. Savannah? When's your last day? Sometime uh, toward the, uh, probably the beginning of February. I don't have a final last day. Okay. Do you anticipate that your successor would be named before you go? Yes, I do. Uh, has, do you think the president's going to call John Boehner today? Uh, I neglected to say, I believe the, uh, th there's a tradition of, uh, uh, of hearing from the new Congress. Uh, he will speak to um, Eric Cantor and Nancy Pelosi, I think, on a call, a call that they're going to place to hear about 3.30 this afternoon. 
I, I can check on uh, whether he intends to speak with uh, with the new speaker. Obviously, he has had an opportunity to speak with him uh, many times since the election. And again, I think uh, well, I think what this administration hopes for is that. for the, the type of bipartisanship and the type of uh, collegiality that was had during the lame duck. There were, we dealt with some tough issues. We dealt with some uh, stuff that had been uh, on the books or on our plates for quite some time, but we were able to, we were able it, to do that in a way uh, that served the interests of the American people. I think that's a good I think it's a pretty good path toward uh, what this president would like to see, our ability to work in a bipartisan manner to make progress and move this country forward. In the interest of collegiality with the president, invite him to play golf? Uh, I, I could see that happening, yes. I, uh, I think the president, that might require the president to uh, uh, practice a bit before, uh, before that. I think, uh, I think the new speaker is... Uh, you're leaving, so you can say that the president isn't as good at golf. <laughs> I, I, I think I don't. I would say that if I had just signed up for uh, eight more years, and that is, uh, I think the president would be probably the first to tell you that. Uh, uh, whenever I don't know what Speaker Boehner's handicap is, but whenever you tell people what your handicap is, it it, it sort of it, it indicates that you are uh, uh, you're good enough to know what that number is. Uh, having played on occasion with the president. Uh, Neither of us have discussed our many handicaps in playing golf. And real quickly, has the president spoken to Bill Bailey this week? <coughs> uh, not that I'm aware of. Do you anticipate he'll speak to him today or, or meet with him this week? Uh, it's certainly possible, yes. Robert, is the Camp David retreat with the Republican leaders still being considered? Well, I think that's something that we're, uh, uh, we continue to have interest in. I don't know where that lies, and I can check on that. Guardian? Yes. Um, in terms of the um, departures and replacements at the top of the West Wing, yours and others, the, a lot of the candidates who are being mentioned or who are certain to take those roles are sort of coming from within the White House or within the general Obama sphere. Is that, um, what are the advantages of that and do you see disadvantages to that in terms of n not having Look, the front? I mean, look, obviously some people will take on new roles that have been in, in here. Uh, and look, there's, I think you guys understand that uh, some sense of continuity is always, uh, is always important. Um, you know, I, look, I look at somebody like a David Plouffe who, sure, he's obviously quite well known to the president, uh, played a very important role in the president getting uh, to this, uh, to the White House. But I think David will bring a perspective that uh, is fresh because he hasn't been inside of here for two years, and I think that's uh, I think that's important. So I, I don't like I don't think you just ha I don't think it's a matter of necessarily just seeing totally different people. I think there's a perspective that you gain when you're not uh, when you're not in here every day. Does Pluff have a start date? Uh, I believe Pluff will start uh, next Monday. And on um, in terms of your future, do you? plan on, are you open to working for people other than advising Barack Obama, advising other <coughs> Democrats or other candidates? candidates? Yeah. I, uh, uh, I have probably, uh, probably worked for my, uh, I probably, my current boss is probably my, uh, my last political candidate. So, and what about in terms of corporate clients? Do you imagine taking anything on other than paid speeches uh, I, to earn money? Uh, I, I haven't gotten that far. Uh, obviously, uh, I wouldn't want to get into that while I was, uh, while I had not made any intentions known about uh, what my future held. So. And, and, and lastly, do um, when you as an advisor to the president from the outside, would that be a paid position, or would you be compensated uh, anyway, or just? I, 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 I don't know that we've gotten all through that. Uh, I. I Sometimes the advice that several of us give the president here, uh, he might consider worth what he paid for. So um, that might not be uh, that. That might. Yeah, I was going to say that might. Uh, we might not want to do that on necessarily a sliding scale, but uh, uh, I, I'll work through some of those issues.
Seems like a pretty good one to stop on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Robert, uh, when you've come out here, has it been a, to the podium, has it been a help or a hindrance to be both a, a main advisor and the spokesman? Uh, look, I, to me it's been a help. And I'll, uh, and I think to you it's been a help because uh, I think you want Whoever is in this role, whether there's somebody, look, I, I, I have a pretty unique relationship with him from, uh, based on just how long I've, I've been here. Uh, and the types of, you know, you spend two years on the road with somebody, or almost two years on the road with somebody, you get to know them pretty well, and you get to know how they think, and I think that's, uh, I think that, that's helpful. Um, look, I, I have always, the way I've operated has been, and, and when I, when we first started here, there were people. Well, do you want to know this? Do you want to see these memos? Do you want look? I I would rather know. And have to be cautious. Than to go out here and say something that uh, turned out to be false. I haven't done that. And uh, I, I don't I don't think it you, it ultimately. I think once. I think if that something like that happens, um, it's hard to do this job. So I, my, my and look, other people may be different. I'm, I'm answering from my perspective, and that is, I would always rather know and understand what. And look, we've we, there have been times, and I can't get into stuff. I'm not going to get into that. But I'd rather know than to land on the wrong side of uh, what the truth is. Through the years, I've been. Certain press secretaries who have been strictly mouthpieces, and others who have had the dual roles that you have, would you advise President Obama to make sure that your successor has the same access that you've had? I will say that, and again. Let me. I want to separate just slightly because I do think it is. I do think I have, because I've been here so long with him, or been with him so long, that there is a uniqueness to that. I think any press secretary. Uh, has to have the ability, and I don't think any press secretary would be hired in this building that didn't have the ability to go see the chief of staff, go see the senior advisors, or go see the president or the vice president uh, when they needed to. I have, uh, I have, I have had that ability. I think obviously most of the counterparts that that have stood up here, I think most of them would tell you that uh, unless you have that ability, it doesn't make any sense for you to do that job. And I don't think anybody in this building would put any potential successor of mine in the position of not granting them the ability to know uh, what those answers are. There, again, there's always the times in which you, you know stuff that the president's going to make news on or you, look, I, I, I read a certain amount and I'm involved in meetings in a situation room that you just can't talk about. You, you, you will have those opportunities, but it's important to uh, to be able to walk into his office and say, um, "Sir, I need to I need to get your opinion." Finally, might you write a book? Uh, not in the near future, no. Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned that on Friday there will be economic <coughs> personnel team announcements. In addition to the NEC, what else could we expect that day? Um, uh, so this is one of those occasions that I was just speaking of, Peter, where one might know uh, and one might decide whether one wants to make. Let me do this, um, because I don't think all of those final decisions have been made. Uh, let, me, uh, let, me, let me address that uh, possibly tomorrow. Okay. So the recovery board, could there be a new person for uh, that? Or I, 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 do, I, do, I will say this. I do not believe that that is uh, envisioned for Friday now will be economic team plural. Plural. Okay. And is the president, as he finalizes these decisions and reshapes his economic team, is he looking for any changes in the direction of his economic policies? Well, look, I, I, again, we talked earlier about um, at each different phase of the recovery, there are different, uh, there are different aspects that uh, um, 
that have to be focused on. Obviously, fiscal discipline and fiscal responsibility uh, after the, some of the extraordinary steps that the White House has had to take on the road to that recovery. Uh, after those, uh, obviously, um, getting our fiscal house in order is, uh, is, is an important one. Um, but look, I, I think that ensuring our competitiveness and making sure that we're, we are as, a, as an administration investing in uh, the investments that will create a workforce that is more educated, more competitive, uh, and, uh, and able to better compete in a global marketplace, uh, those are the types of things that are tremendously important to this president. Could you talk about if someone like Bill Daly were to join the administration, <laughs> how they could be an effective advocate uh, with the business community? Well, let, let me, let me um, without using that hypothetical name, I, look, I, I, I think that this president is, uh, I, I think that we've taken steps that uh, uh, were important to ensure financial stability and to ensure that business was um, on the best footing possible in this country. I think the president would be the first to advocate for uh, what he believes are some strong pro-business policies. I think if you look to take a second and look at the, bless you, look at the auto sales numbers from yesterday. For the first time, and I'm not, they were checking for me, and I don't know how long, the big three increased their market share. And uh, you saw an investment, uh, in the auto companies that was made by this administration that restructured Chrysler and GM, pulled the, <coughs> put them into bankruptcy, restructured them, took them out, has led to, uh, I think, what anybody would term as an, an unqualified success at this point. Um, a stronger economy has lifted auto sales. As I said, the big three have added market share for the first time um, uh, together in a long time. And I think those are the type of pro-business policies that uh, the president is proud of. And I think the president will have an opportunity to continue to and enhance his outreach to, uh, to CEOs and to business leaders throughout the country. Would it be helpful, though, to have someone of his stature be able to I go think out? It was, and uh, it's always helpful to have, um, uh, to have uh, more and more people who can do that for you. Um, Robert, why why was the decision made to announce your departure before a replacement uh, um, was found? I don't know. I uh, uh, I, I don't I don't know that it was that unusual. More public and more kind of fishbowl like than if you did it all at once. As opposed to all of our uh, unfishbowl like. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't see that. I don't know the answer. Okay. My other question is, in um, follow-up to Laura, if you're going to have some kind of a major role, outside role as a paid consultant to the campaign, why wouldn't you rule out taking corporate clients for the duration? I, I don't think I did. I just, I just, I, I, you got to understand, I've been, uh, this is an announcement that's only a few hours old, and I haven't, uh, uh, I, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't totally figured out all of what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Right. No, I'm not talking about for the rest of your life. I'm talking about for the duration that you're a, paid consultant to the re-election campaign, are you saying that, that you feel it would be okay to have corporate clients at the same time? Uh, if that's something I decided to do and I was comfortable with who those clients were, I don't think that's, I don't think that necessarily, um, again, I, I would not get into the hypothetical of, uh, of that at, the, at this point because it's just not, uh, uh, not something that uh, is at this point relevant. Okay, one last question on health care. Um, <coughs> to the extent that the debate is going to be relitigated, I'm wondering <laughs> if um, you feel that the White House has kind of a, a, a chance to, to make a more effective argument and maybe persuade more people than uh, ended up being persuaded of the merits of this last year. And you talk about the um, insurance reforms that are popular, like children with pre-existing conditions or the donut hole or caps and rescissions. What, what I'm wondering is, is the White House ready to defend, you know, robustly the, the things that are most controversial about the plan, the expense of universal coverage and the individual mandate? Well, we rarely talk about those two things. 
Well, well, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case since the individual mandate is something that is uh, uh, that we've discussed in here recently because there are a myriad of court cases uh, that have been brought around that. Um, understand what we talked about fiscal responsibility a few minutes ago. What's what, one one thing that's unique about what we passed was we paid for what we passed. Okay? We, so let's understand what that means for repeal. There's, it, it, is, it is interesting and unique to see when one pays attention to and when one ignores the Congressional Budget Office. Right? The Congressional Budget Office, which, how much is, how much is this, what's the price tag on this, how's it being paid for, were questions that we answered a lot of during the debate. And were asked a lot of us during the debate by those who opposed what we were trying to do. Repealing health care reform adds $140 billion to the deficit over the next 10 years. So that they, they've got to cut not just the $100 billion they're talking about, but now I assume they're going to pay for that too. That doesn't count the trillion dollars over the 10 years after that. So we're happy to talk about the, the, the expense of this. Let's also be clear and talk about the expense of what happens if you repeal it. Not just for families with children that are sick. Not just for families that worry that their coverage might have been capped. Or, God forbid, an insurance company is making your medical decisions. But also what it means for, uh, what it means for a deficit in our debt. Go ahead. Um, so just again about what you're going to be doing in the future. Um, Have the Cowboys found a coach yet? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, is it, <laughs> can, can we say that you're going to be a paid consultant of the campaign? Is that is that definitely right. what you're going to be doing? At some point, yes. Okay. And how, if at all, when in the future can we expect you to be on television or acting as a surrogate for? Hopefully as we speak. Uh, <laughs> in future capacity. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I don't. I don't know the answer to that yet. I, look, I, I, I assume that uh, uh, I will have an opportunity to continue being an advocate for the decisions that are being made or have been made in this White House, and uh, I am certainly happy to do that. Robert, once the decisions, all the decisions on personnel are known, what? There will be a test. <laughs> what will. will it say about? the difference between now and the beginning and the administration, what the next two years will well, be like versus the yeah. first I mean, look, I think we have always, uh, we have always talked about the fact that the next two years was, were, were going to be different than the first two years. Um, we were able to pass health care reform and financial reform, um, things like the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, all of which now have to be implemented. And I think the president has always looked at the first two years uh, as a period of legislation and the, uh, at least the next year is a period of implementation and a period of continued economic, uh, taking steps to continue that economic recovery. Um, so I think you, there's a little bit, uh, there's a, there's a, there's going to be a different group of people occupying the same desks that we have now that, uh, that will play uh, in a in a probably slightly different environment based on uh, uh, what I think the focus of this building is likely to be. So how does that translate into the skill sets he's looking for? Is he just looking for individual people that fit in a particular round yeah. hole or square peg? But, Look, th but this is probably a better discussion to have when we have a, a, a sort of larger tableau of, of what all of those announcements will be. Um, but I, I look, there's Obviously, within each different position, there's a skill set that, um, given the given the agenda and the environment, that are uh, that may be slightly different than what you've had again in the past two years. Let, let's we can do a little bit more of that as we get uh, into this a little bit. More. There will be multiple announcements on personnel. Uh, I, there will be multiple on Friday, and uh, I assume that. Uh, uh, it, it, there may be some more after Friday. Multiple economic announcements. Multiple economic announcements, yes. Uh, none that I'm aware.
staff won't be before Friday? Uh, I, 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 I have nothing new on chief of staff. Well, but sticking with the big picture, Robert, given the number of and, and, and importance <laughs> of the jobs at stake, is this a major overhaul, a minor tweaking? Is it a big change of direction? Is it just some retooling of attitude? Is it just shifting from legislating? Is it bigger than a bread box or smaller than a slot? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, no, I, I, look, I, I think there are, um, no, I, I think there's a, I think in many ways this is a pretty major retooling. Um, but again, I, this is, part of this is, is based on the fact that um, there are a lot of us who uh, just feel like we need a little bit of a break. Um, so some of that happens because uh, just of the natural cycle of this. I, 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 think, uh, uh, I think that's, yeah, I should have layered that into my answer on, on Jackie's question. I think that's certainly important. Um, Again, there will also again there's there are new environments and there's uh, you know there's a new Congress there's a whole host of things that one uh, has to and should take into account when you're making a lot of these decisions and certainly the president and the team here are doing that. But it's just it's more than just new faces doing the same thing. Oh, I think so. I think there's and the truth is, I mean, I think you know uh, I wouldn't necessarily think of the fact that uh, you know there may be functions in one area or domain or in, in the box of one uh, personnel uh, position that may get moved or shifted. So I, I don't, uh, I, I think any time you have the natural change of a White House, it's not simply just, okay, what you did, somebody else sits where you did and does everything that you did. I think there'll be some, there'll be some, uh, Retooling of that as well. But a major retooling for what purpose or to correct what deficiencies? I mean, what's well, major retooling for what? Well, again, I, I, I just I, the reason I would consider it a major retooling is obviously there are a lot of people that have been here for uh, that have been here for a while, and, and certainly since the inception of the administration that are leaving. Again, I, 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 as I've said to you guys countless times, some people, uh, a lot of people leave uh, because it's uh, it's time to take a break it's time to do something different or it's time to um, it's you know some people look some people here dr. Summers is a good example somebody who uh, was going to serve for and told the president he would serve for two years there's a lot of people that have been like that but those people can leave without a major retooling you just called it a major retooling let me be careful then in what I said I said as a major retooling because there's going to be a lot of new faces to follow on there, to what degree is it because he's dissatisfied with the performance of people so far? Again, I, 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 I would suggest that almost all of what you've seen is, uh, not all of what you've seen, but a decent amount of what you've seen is, uh, is the natural attrition of an administration. When you talk about natural attrition and, and the exhaustion of people who have been doing this for essentially four years when you count the campaign, that goes for the president as well. How do you address, you know, his... Have we not told level. you about the replacement of that? <laughs> Finally, a lead. No, I mean, look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, no, look, I, I mean, look, there's, uh, there's one, I mean, look, that is, that is, you sign up for and understand that uh, you, as a president, you can't, you, 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 you can't take uh, a year off to recharge. Um, so I think it's important to put people around him that have the have the fresh perspective uh, that have come into a different job or have come into the administration after having not been here for a couple of years and give this place the vitality that it it will always have largely because it's the White House. But I think it's important that. Uh, and, and I think the president believes that's important, that they're a, a, having additional voices, having different and fresh perspectives, having those come from, again, folks that haven't necessarily been inside this bubble for two years or four years or seven years, uh, that that's really important to the, the process of, uh, of running an administration, of running a White House, and of... Uh, 
governing a country. Robert, yeah, thank you. Um, having been at this for two years, can you talk to us a bit about the value of the daily briefing? Uh, do you think it's helpful to the general public? Is it helpful to reporters? Is it helpful to the White House? Would you make any changes? Would you take it off camera? Do you like it being on camera? <laughs> <laughs> We've experimented with a couple different things. Like, uh, I do think there's a great utility in doing, uh, in doing some off-camera gaggles. We probably, uh, truth be told, haven't done enough of those. Um, I think there's an ability to, uh, to talk about things slightly differently without uh, all these fancy lights. Um, I think it's important, though, uh, as I said, I alluded to earlier, it's important to, um, as a government, to come out here and talk about and answer the, talk about the policies and decisions that are being made and to answer the questions surrounding those. Um, like I said, I, I, there are days in which I, 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 my guess is it will happen again this week <laughs> where you pick up that newspaper or you turn on your computer at 4.30 in the morning while your coffee is still brewing and you groan and, oh, God, what, a, you know, great, this is going to, and then you get on your BlackBerry. And so, but I think there's, there's a usefulness to that. Uh, I think there's a reason that there's an, there's, this has been an enduring quality. Um, I do think there's, uh, look, I think there has to be, uh, and, and I think there should continue to be experimentation again with gaggles. We've tried more stuff on um, social networking that I think will continue uh, long past my existence inside this building because that too is important. You now have the ability to, look, I got on, uh, I got on uh, something like Twitter largely from watching um, you guys tweet while the president was standing right here. And it's a fascinating concept. All this stuff moves much faster. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think that will endure. And I think, I think the briefing will endure. And I think what gets added to and what complements the briefing in terms of breaking down any walls that exist between the people and their government will, uh, will only accelerate. Yes, sir. Robert, on, Robert, back, the, on that uh, end-of-life counseling, could, oh, you, say, could you say some more on that end-of-life oh, counseling? Oh, let me just go to Glenn. I'll come. I was going to ask exactly the same question. <laughs> <laughs> um, to follow up uh, on a couple of the other questions uh, uh, regarding the uh, retooling, um, uh, there was a lot of criticism. Some of it came from within the administration, sort of self-criticism about messaging in the last year and communications. Um, you're leaving, David Axelrod is re leaving, you two are the principal architects of the communications and messaging strategy. Should we read anything into that? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, look, I, I, we'd be the first ones to tell you uh, that, uh, that we, we haven't been perfect. Um, it's a difficult environment, um, given where we are economically. Um, uh, does not to make any excuses. I, I, I've, people in here will hear me joke. I haven't been to a policy problem meeting yet. Uh, every meeting I go to is the policy's fine. It's just we're not communicating it well. Um, uh, you know, I, I get that. Uh, I, I get that. That's sort of some of the way that, uh, that that you go through problems here. But I think. I think that there, I think you'll see continuity, obviously, in the message operation here. Um, uh, that uh, that is important, and, and again, you'll see people like uh, like David Pluff will come in and uh, and be a fresh perspective. Uh, I, I don't, I, I, but I think it'd be, I don't think it'd be fair to read into the fact that uh, the reason we're leaving is we haven't felt like we've accomplished anything. Do you think you'd like Robert, to be staying even if? Uh, even if the midterms hadn't turned out just to be so difficult for them? I didn't make a decision to, uh, to step away and recharge because of the midterms. It's just a, it's a very natural time in the administration. It's a good time to get, as I've said, some fresh voices, uh, including uh, um, somebody up here. Margaret. Thanks. You talked about how uh, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be a new voice, that it's important to be a fresh voice. And yeah. even if uh, Bill Daly and Gene Sperling aren't the ones named to these new positions, they've obviously been given very serious consideration or the front runners are expected to be named. Um, 
these are um, these are Clinton people originally. Is that a coincidence, or is or or is their service and what they represented and their experience uh, back in the Clinton years um, something that you? Let me say this because I, I don't want to. I'm I sh I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. Well, um, uh, as Jackie pointed out, I'm, I've, I've been pretty good at not making the news today. Um, I will. Uh, I don't want to get into. I don't want I, again. I don't want my answer to be based on, on, uh, on the names that you brought. I, I, look, I I think there are. The, I guess part of the problem with this is there's not like one. Type of person, right? You you want people that. Uh, there are people that are important to have in here, that haven't served in government, and then there are other positions where, previous service in government, be it for Clinton, be it for others. Uh, is important. We have people here, obviously. Uh, uh, you know, I, I you know, I go to down to John Brennan's office. There's uh, there's a, a picture of uh, he and George H. W. Bush. So there are people that have been here through um, a, a bunch of different administrations. Again, I think some of it. I hate to talk about it writ large because sometimes it's, um, you know, sometimes it's. Uh, I don't think the example necessarily carries uh, as uh, as easily. It was good during the Clinton years, though. I mean, is there does this administration believe that bring that having some of those uh, advisors who were responsible for bits of the economy? I think. Uh, I think. Look, whether it's Jack Lew uh, at OMB, uh, whether it look, I mean, Dr. Summers, who had been obviously uh, here before, obviously Secretary Geithner uh, served also in the Clinton administration. And others who, um, and Gene, uh, Jason Furman. Uh, there's, there's other, you know, folks that have, uh, that have, important experience. And I think that's good to have. Uh, you know, the, they understand and and have, uh, they have, as I said, they have important experiences. They have, uh, they understand what, uh, what the job entails. There was some discussion about you staying on. Um, Staying on in the administration, but but not as uh, press secretary, and I'm wondering why you decided not to go that route. Was it a matter of just being too tired? Was it a matter of not finding exactly the right portfolio? No, or I, look, I I, uh, I had some. Uh, I think there. I think the best service that I can provide uh, this president is uh, for the next couple of years uh, outside of this building, uh, and. Uh, that's that coincides nicely with my <laughs> uh, wanting to get a little bit of a break, uh, and uh, it all worked out that way. Did you see coming Robert? back to the White House if you win the second term? Or are you declaring your White House uh, service done? I uh, well, I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I wouldn't close the door. I told the president I'm happy to serve. Uh, as ambassador to Italy in the second administration. <laughs> Begrudgingly, I'll do it, but okay, all right, you got me, I'll do it. But seriously, could you, could you see coming back here in a second term? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 one, of my, one, of the, one of my next tasks is going to be to uh, uh, make sure that he has the ability to make some of those decisions. What did the administration make of the um, unusually public way that the Israelis asked for the release of uh, Jonathan Pollard yesterday? And is, is this decision in any way likely to be taken in the context of you know wider peace moves in the region? Look, I think the I think the, obviously the State Department answered this a little bit yesterday in saying that uh, they received the request. They'll take a look at it. I think it is important to. Uh, Underscore that uh, Mr. Pollard was convicted of uh, some of the most serious crimes uh, that anybody can be charged with. Yes, sir. You, the, your use of social media platforms like as you used to call the Twitter and YouTube and yeah, the use of these kind of platforms. Yeah. To what degree can you gauge its effectiveness in terms of sort of bypassing us who are well, filters? Here, here's I think a great misnomer. Because I think it's important, I, I, social networking and the use of those type of tools, I think, I, I don't look at it as, boy, I can now talk to people and you guys, I'm going to go around you. I, I've never said that. Um, 
because, quite frankly, I subscribe to what you write, you guys subscribe to what I write, and I think what's unique is we've done recently, uh, and I, I've greatly enjoyed them, though I realize that, uh, and I know you all will agree, that very few of my answers conform to 140 characters, uh, but, you know, I think it's interesting that you can have a, you can have a dialogue with people who are going about their daily lives, uh, who have questions for the administration about what it's doing, and uh, and uh, you guys have written off of that, and I think that's so. I I think the big I just don't think people should look at the increased transparency in their government, a greater explanation of uh, the decisions that we're making uh, as an effort to move around uh, and go around you guys. When was your last vacation? Uh, uh, serious vacation? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Uh, I, I, when was the last time I took a vacation and didn't take my BlackBerry? It's been, uh, uh, it is, it's certainly exceeded, uh, uh, exceeded, uh, it's probably been almost seven years. I, I, I will, uh, th that would be nice. <laughs> still, is he still going to be a two blackberry man when you leave here? Uh, I hope not. I hope not. Let me. You had an end of life well, question. I'm sorry. Life counseling. Yeah. If you could say a little more on that, was the president concerned that uh, by uh, issuing this 1233 uh, in executive order uh, that he might be portrayed as something of a like President uh, Kevorkian or something, given the tremendous opposition to that particular aspect of the health care bill? From the U.S. population. No, I, I look that obviously that your characterization did not play a role in in the administration's determination of that. Um, I there is a I think if you look at polling, they, their uh, public polling, uh, while there's concern from some about that provision, there is not uh, at least I have not seen something that would have people believe that. Um, a great majority of people believe in the concept of, and I think it's widely been debunked, this notion of, uh, of, of a so-called death panel. So, uh, awarding, awarding doctors, giving them bonuses for having this kind of counseling, of course, would lead to more of it going on, pressuring a lot of well, people. I, I, to I think that's a mischaracterization. I think that's a pretty broad mischaracterization of what, uh, of what, of what the rule would do. Uh, this is, uh, that's just, that's, that's not an accurate characterization of what's going on. Thanks, Robert.